So thanks for inviting me to talk today. My name is Tom Derrick. I am a digital curator at the British Library, I'm part of the digital research team there. And I'm also assigned um, specifically to a project called Two Centuries of Indian Print, which is kind of a digitization and research project that since 2016 has been funded by uh, both the British government and the Arts and Humanities Research Council in the UK. And one of the, well, we've been digitizing uh, just over 1,600 books from our South Asian printed books collection which date between 1713 and 1914. Um, the majority of those books, 1,000 of them, are Bengali books, uh, so written in Bangla. And you can see an image of one of those books to the right of the screen. Uh, one of the primary objectives of the project is to experiment with different OCR tools and try and find an optimal solution for automating recognition of printed Bangla. And the idea is that we would um, find a method that we can apply to our own books and then make the resulting uh, data available as open data sets through open licenses uh, on the British Library's repository and other online um, sites. And that in itself would then be a resource for digital humanists to be able to analyze um, the OCR text from the books that we've digitized. Um, we're also very much interested in collaborating and building a network with um, like-minded institutions in India and internationally who are working on OCR for non-Latin scripts and specifically Indian language scripts. And um, so OCR in this area is quite a challenge. Uh, a lot of OCR systems primarily or initially were set up to deal with uh, Latin scripts and, and still to this day perform best with them on the whole. Um, that's a lot to do with the amount of training data uh, that they receive, um, but also the nature of the script itself. And with, with a language like Bengali, it has an extensive alphabet with complex character forms, um, including floating diacritics, which aren't you know, physically connected to the glyph, but are, are um, related in meaning. Um, has different areas of meaning to the text, um, three different levels, the upper, middle and lower section. And um, glyphs are often connected by a connecting line called the matra. So all of these things taken together are quite a challenge for OCR systems. Uh, so with that in mind, um, we've I've been undertaking a number of initiatives and that began in earnest with uh, the ICDAR competitions back in 2017 and 2019, ICDAR being the International Conference of Document Analysis and Recognition, um, where we invited institutions worldwide to take part um, to compare different OCR methods working with a um, selection of our Bengali books. Um, we gave them just a very small training set of 25 pages of ground truth transcriptions, i.e. perfect transcriptions, that had been created by um, our project partners at Jadavpur University in Kolkata. Um, and we then passed each of the competition entrants a further 56 pages of untranscribed pages that they ran through their um, OCR systems. And the results from those 56 pages were then analysed by the Prima Research Group, who are based at the University of Salford near Manchester in England. And they evaluated the results based on character accuracy, um, bag of words, and a kind of layout evaluation that looked at page segmentation and region classification. And um, what you can see in the, the graph below are the results of the carrot accuracies. And um, I can't get into all of the detail at the moment now, but it's an um, important thing to realize is the red bars are a more accurate reflection of the character accuracy um, as opposed to the blue bars. So if we look at the red bars, um, the results that we saw were Google, Google's Cloud Vision API was the best performer by some distance in terms of character accuracy um, with 75% which is, we thought was very impressive given it's working with a very small amount of ground truth training data and that Google's um, synthetic data that's probably been trained on might not necessarily reflect what we were giving it in this circumstance, which was historical um, Bengali text. So 
um, just going through the results quickly, we also compared it to Tesseract version four at the time. And you can see uh, that was a little bit lower. Um, DS, that was a team based in Indi Microsoft India. Um, Bangla OCR, they are a private um, lab based in Kolkata called the Geonosis Lab. And then ABCD, um, they're a team at the computer science department at, um, at Jadapur University. And the reason why it's showing 0% is because they weren't able to submit any text results to us. However, they did perform very well with the page segmentation and um, region classification. Um, on that metric, they scored about 70% accuracy. Um, Google was 68% and Tesseract 67%. So the, the methods were very close in terms of um, being able to replicate these regions that we had drawn, like you know, how closely was the geometric, geometric overlap between the region in the ground truth and in the results, that's what we were looking at. And the classification in terms of whether it's a paragraph, an image, et cetera. So um, it was very good practice to go through these competitions. And like I dare say, we might enter again if, if it comes up. One thing we did take away from it is that all methods could probably do more to improve their pre-processing around um, robust binarization and creating training dictionaries to deal with historical text um, that might improve the results with this type of, kind of archival material. Um, and then in concert with the uh, latest ICDAL competition, we had also started working with um, Transcribus. So we've had a lot of success with this tool. We, we're seeing about 90 to 94% character accuracy on the Bengali books. Um, and that's improved over time here in the table below. You can see each of the iterations of training that we've run on each of the models um, that Gunther was explaining before. So we're seeing about yeah, 90 to 94% from just 148 pages of um, ground truth training transcriptions, again, provided by Jadapur University. Um, and you can see here the workflow that we, we followed. Um, this is a generalist model, I would say, that we've created based on representative images from our collection. So where there are different kind of types of layouts on the page, um, different gaps between the text, et cetera. And we've independently verified these results as well. Um, um, recently, we've just finished processing an entire series of Bengali books from the British Library through um, Transcribus using our trained model. Um, and that the results of that will be ingested into the British Library system so that our books, when they're online, are full text searchable and made available as a data set as well for analysis. So British Library is, is widening its use of Transcribus um, as we're a founding member of the Read Co-op. Uh, we've been running, running workshops as well workshops for as well for us. And um, yeah, we're, we're, I'm very happy from my point of view, what I've experienced using the system as an end-to-end -end process of, you know, taking a raw image and getting the transcriptions and working all the way through to training a model and then exporting results. Um, it's a very intuitive system. I would recommend others use it. Um, the only slight challenge we've had occasionally is that a small percentage of books, sometimes the um, layout analysis within Transcribus, um, the, lay, the line segmentation isn't quite perfect, um, but often that can be manually corrected. So I'm um, very happy with this. Um, and then on a related note, and my, my last slide is that we have started to put our Bengali books um, onto Wikisource via Wikimedia Commons. And the reason why this is relevant to OCR is that um, we're working with the Bengali Wikisource community um, who are really doing most of the work in this case. I'm uploading to Wikimedia Commons. They're taking it from there. And what we can see in this example here is one of our books, which we put up recently onto Wikisource, where you can see the image and then a side-by-side -side transcription of the results. Um, the way this is generated is that Wikisource um, can use Google's um, API to get the text. And then there's a community of volunteers who are proofreading and validating the text. Um, so ideally we should end up with perfect side-by-side -side transcriptions. What we want to do is run a competition next year to um, encourage kind of wider participation from Bengali speaking community to um, kind of get up to speed so we can 
we can Im improve these results um, as we upload more, more books and get the transcriptions ready. And ultimately, we'd like to export these transcriptions um, so that we can, again, like, ingest them into the British Library systems and make them available to others for analysis. And that's me. One of the things we've talked about, and you heard it at the beginning of this, was that libraries, archives, and museums have a lot of original source data. We've talked about things like competitions, maybe similar to what the British Library, uh, I think, has run it, that Tom spoke to. Um, is there a way that as a community we might effectively pool our data to uh, create training data and better models that could then be shared across at least the library archives and museum sector? But certainly so, looks certainly looks great, great. It's something that Gunter might say as well is um, the, the open models um, that Transcribus sort of encourages um, is a good way in itself. So we're making our model for Bengali available Others are available out there for other Indian languages um, that could be especially useful. So I think that's certainly like certainly the community within of users within Transcribus um, have this kind of um, library of shared models that are available. Uh, so if you, for example, have a body of material that um, you would otherwise need mm -hmm. to manually transcribe and create ground truth for, you could potentially just use one of the existing models out there. Um, yeah, I think competitions are absolutely a great way to go and that was incredibly useful from our experience to um, I only showed you the results that we got in but there actually was far more institutions that registered an interest in the competition and we kind of established the network and got talking that way with them um, so I think um, yeah anything that we can do in, in that arena would be would be useful.